Disclaimer. Please note that this video does not replace a genetic counseling session or a detailed discussion with your healthcare provider. The following content is intended for educational purposes only, and we encourage you to discuss further with your healthcare provider to see what is most suitable for you. Before proceeding, we encourage you to check out our principal worksheet linked down below in the description box. We've prepared a few questions with an answer key for you to test your understanding. So feel free to pause and rewind this video to your comfort. Prenatal testing can provide valuable insight for expecting mothers and their healthcare providers to make informed decisions about their care. There are two main classes of prenatal testing, number one, screening test, and number two, diagnostic test. Both offer useful information that differ in their intended use. In this video, we will be focusing on a specific type of screening test, non-invasive prenatal testing, or NIPT. Hi, my name is Yasmin, and my classmate Anahita and I have put this video together to provide a general overview of NIPT and whether or not it might be right for you. We are both Master of Health Science students in the Medical Genomics program at the University of Toronto. So let's get into it. What exactly is NIPT? Well, non-invasive prenatal testing is a method of determining the risk of whether or not the fetus will be born with the most common chromosomal abnormalities, such as trisomy 13, trisomy 18, and trisomy 21, from as early as 10 weeks of pregnancy. This test analyzes small fragments of DNA that are circulating in a pregnant woman's blood. Unlike most DNA, which is found inside a cell's nucleus, these fragments are free-floating and not within cells, and so are called cell-free DNA, or CFDNA. These small fragments usually contain fewer than 200 DNA blocks, or base pairs, and arise when cells naturally die off, releasing their DNA into the bloodstream. In comparison to common invasive methods, such as amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling, this method does not pose a risk to you or your baby. But how does NIPT work? During pregnancy, the mother's bloodstream contains a mix of CFDNA that comes from her cells and cells from the placenta. The placenta is tissue in the uterus that links the fetus and the mother's blood supply. These cells are shed into the mother's bloodstream throughout pregnancy. The DNA in placental cells is usually identical to the DNA of the fetus. Analyzing CFDNA from the placenta provides an opportunity for early detection of certain genetic abnormalities without harming the fetus. To analyze the DNA, the maternal blood sample is sent to a medical laboratory for DNA sequencing and further analysis. This analysis will provide a clearer image about what's going on at the chromosomal level. Humans typically have 46 chromosomes arranged in 23 pairs. In each pair, one chromosome is donated from the mother and one from the father, as shown in this laboratory-produced image called a karyotype. In the case of trisomies, instead of the regular pair of chromosomes found at each position, there is one extra chromosome present as a result of complications during fertilization. In trisomy 21, or Down syndrome, the extra chromosome occurs at pair 21. It takes approximately seven to 10 business days for your healthcare provider to receive the results of your NIPT post-medical laboratory analysis. So you're probably wondering, what will the NIPT results mean? NIPT results are typically communicated through a risk status. If you receive a low risk result, it means your baby is unlikely to have any of the chromosomal disorders tested for. If you receive a high-risk result, 
it means your baby is likely to be affected, but this is not definitive. So what happens if my NIPT results come back as high risk? If NIPT results come back as high risk for at least one of the chromosomal abnormalities tested, further testing is required to confirm a diagnosis. Your healthcare provider will then order a diagnostic test such as amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling, both of which are invasive and pose a slight risk of miscarriage. So then how accurate is NIPT? NIPT is the screening test with the highest detection rate, meaning it is more likely to identify whether your pregnancy has a higher chance for a common chromosomal condition. For example, in trisomy 21 or Down syndrome, the detection rate is 99% accurate with a false positive rate of less than 1%. So you may be wondering, how are NIPT costs covered? If you're a resident of Ontario, NIPT is available to all pregnant individuals, but will only be covered by Ontario Health Insurance Plan, or OHIP, if one of the following criteria are met. Category 1 criteria can be ordered by any physician or nurse practitioner. The first criteria is a positive prenatal screening result from multiple marker screening, or MMS, for this pregnancy. The second criteria is maternal age of 40 years or older at the expected date of delivery. In the context of in vitro fertilization, this maternal age is guided by the age at egg retrieval. The third criteria is a nuchal translucency ultrasound measurements of at least 3.5 millimeters. The fourth criteria is a personal history of a previous pregnancy or child with trisomy 21, 18, or 13. And the fifth criteria is an ongoing twin pregnancy. Category 2 criteria must be ordered by a genetics or maternal fetal medicine specialist and includes finding on ultrasound, which are associated with an increased chance for trisomy 21, 18, or 13, a chance for sex-linked genetic condition, ultrasound findings suggestive of a sex chromosome difference, or ultrasound findings suggestive of a disorder of sex determination. If you meet one of these requirements, your healthcare provider can use the OHIP-funded requisition for testing. If you do not meet any of these requirements, NIPT can be paid for out of pocket. Medical laboratories such as Dynacare and Life Labs offer NIPT alongside genetic counseling services with a referral from your doctor. The cost is currently around $500, but some personal health insurance plans may subsidize this. Just as a final reminder, we've included a principal worksheet and answer key for you to put your NIPT knowledge to the test and we'd love to hear how you did. We hope this video about NIPT was informative and helpful to you, and we appreciate any feedback and comments you may have. Thank you for watching.